Hey guys, so here's this little story about this Disneyland entry badge. It's basically an arm band which you would wear and every time you enter the park you scan it and also scan your fingerprints and then you can enter different rides as far as I know and the band knows who you are and the system behind it as well. And this one was donated by someone to me and I'm very thankful for it. But after opening it up, it revealed that there's not only an NFC tag in, which you can see here this black dot on the right. There's also this NRF microcontroller nearby, which has for once a battery and also a separate antenna with presumably at that point 2.4 gigahertz. So I looked through the internet but found nothing really about that NRF31512 microcontroller. But a very similar chip from Nordic which was the NRF24LE1 which is a 2.4 gigahertz microcontroller with integrated RF and AT51 core. And then I looked at the pinout of that debugging interface, as you can see here, and compared it to an image of a Logitech uh, laser presenter and found that the naming of the test pins here are very similar to the one used at the other NRF chip. And after a bit of playing with the pinout and reversing it, I came up with this reverse pinout and was able to talk to the debugging interface, which is just like normal SPI, but you have to enter it through the proc pin. Um, I used an ESP32 to talk to the microcontroller, to the NRF and was able to get a little bit of bytes out of it, like from the info page section, which is basically like a configuration memory address. I was able to read some bytes from it. So I was very sure that this is a correct connection and I was able to talk to the microcontroller. But every time I tried to read the memory, the main memory of it, it just returned zero and some status register did um, contain the value 4 and I presumed that this is meaning that the readout protection is enabled. After a bit of playing around and looking further like that, I firstly gave up on it. But later in the evening I just simply asked ChatGPT and it came up with not only the basic data sheet for that microcontroller, it also returned the full pinout of the microcontroller, which was very close to the one I reversed at that time. This also um, confirmed that the status register with the value 4 means that the readout protection is enabled. Unfortunately, it has shown that this microcontroller is just an OTP only microcontroller. So you can only write the flash on it once and then it's basically locked forever. Um, that's kind of a bummer, but as the goal for myself is really not to write a new firmware for it, as this band is tightly closed and not really openable. I am more interested in what is Disney really doing here in the park? Like, do they really track people that go around and see where they are? Or is it just to know who you are when you enter like a, a ride or so? So I started playing around with glitching the whole thing. And from the past, I was well aware of the NRF51 glitching problem 
and used basically the same method now with an N-channel MOSFET connected to the DEC2 pin in this case. Uh, you also tried the DEC1 of course. These are mostly the core voltage regulations or core voltage rails and they are brought to the outside to connect a capacitor to stabilize them. So I played around with some very simple Arduino sketch. This does not only include now the glitching part but also the dumping of the firmware. And it did not look that uh, nice at the beginning. It's cleaned by now. I connected the oscilloscope. We have for once here the blue one is the trigger output of the deck 2 being pulled to ground by the MOSFET. And at the top we have the 3.3 um, voltage rail of the um, whole PCB. And if we now take a closer look at the current consumption, it is now uh, being looked up by this PPK2 from Nordic as well. Uh, we can see that it's now in the normal running state. The two second separated uh, peaks here are when the microcontroller wakes up and does something still unknown at this point. And if I now reset the board, we will have here on the top the UART output lock. So I'm resetting the ESP32 that drives everything. We can see here that it will try to dump or try to glitch it. You can see the current consumption goes a bit up. And also, I will just restart everything. You can see here in a moment like this, how the glitching is now going I will just restart it again. Going from zero point of boot time over the area where the chip just boots up and does something. And the moment it stops, it's when it has successfully glitched the NRF chip. And it will then happily dump out the whole flash content, even if it's OTP. But uh, that's not the problem here. So uh, this is working very reliable by now. So each time I reset it, you can see that after around four to five milliseconds in delay from boot, it will be happily glitched like so. You can see here the different boot tries and this is the dumping of the firmware. And here as well, you can see that the glitch did work out. After that was done, I loaded everything into Gitra, which is a nice reversing tool, and especially for 8051 core CPUs. And we got a pretty good reversing or pseudo code already from the decompiled assembler. And this is presumably the main function. I haven't had time to look anything deeper than that right now. But that is now the next part to do. And that is really such a nice journey to go from a completely unknown chip because there was just simply nothing on the internet until now, except for ChatGPT knowing the whole datasheet, of course, which will help on the reversing, just to a completely open and glitched chip. And yeah, I'm very happy about that. So stay tuned for an update on the reversed stuff the chip is doing on this two second period. And yeah, let's see if the data is encrypted or whatever it is doing there. Okay.